The Great Chicago Fire destroyed about one-third of the city, meaning most of Chicago was spared. Here are 11 buildings that survived the fire. This home, built by Charles Hull, is a mere half mile northwest of where the fire started. But the wind blew the fire northeast. Where Hull House is located at Polk and Halstead was completely spared by the flames. Unlike its neighbors, the house was also saved from the wrecking ball over the years. That's because Jane Addams started her famous settlement house here. Hull House, because it was the first of its kind in the country, is not only a Chicago landmark, but a national landmark. The winds also blew the fire away from Holy Family Church and St. Ignatius next door. As the city burned, Father Arnold Damon vowed that if his church were spared, he would keep seven lights burning. If you pray and save the church and burn the whole city down, is that really a good thing? But we love the legend of a, of a prayerful man. True to Father Damon's word, seven lights still burn here today. Old St. Patrick's Church not only survived the Great Fire on October 8, 1871, it barely escaped another fire just one night earlier. St. Patrick's stood though, and it was able in the aftermath of the fire to provide charitable services to those who were affected by the disaster. The Clark House was safe as was most of what's now the South Loop. Because its owner feared another fire, the next year he moved the house about 30 blocks south. We thought if he brought it all the way down to about 45th and Wabash, in what was then Hyde Park Township, it would be safe from any future disasters. In 1977, the house was moved again, this time back to its original neighborhood. The actual house itself had to be joisted over elevated tracks, uh, and it created quite the media spectacle as it kind of traveled from the south up to the north to eventually be placed where it still stands today. Only two buildings in the central business district survived the fire, and one of them was still under construction. The other, the Lind Block, survived thanks to its location. The occupants soaked the building with river water. They could go right to the river, fill up barrels full of water, take it to the roof of the Lynn block, and make sure that it was saturated and that any sort of stray sparks that landed on it, they could quickly put out. The building lived through another fire in 1896, yet another in 1899, and a fourth fire in 1955. And it survived all the way up to the 20th century, only to be torn down in 1963 as part of redevelopment in the Chicago Loop. The water tower and pumping station are the most famous survivors of the fire. But the pumps inside the station were destroyed, cutting off water to the city's fire hydrants. And there went any hope that firefighters could do anything without a supply of water. They were helpless. Chicago's north side was the hardest hit by the fire. The Malin Ogden mansion was the only house left standing for a two-mile stretch. As a result, it would become a tourist attraction in subsequent decades. The house was eventually torn down to make way for the Newberry Library. This nearby church was largely destroyed, but the bell tower survived. It was incorporated into a new building after the fire. It's said that you can still see burn marks. I can see black streaks near the top. Maybe the remnants of the fire, but we don't know for sure. St. Michael Church in Lincoln Park also burned, though some walls were left standing. As at St. James, the church was rebuilt using the salvaged structures. It was a testament to the endurance of the congregation. They wanted to build out from the ruins and say that they had survived this disaster, that they were still here. The survival of this wood frame house in Lincoln Park was nothing short of a miracle. It belonged to police officer Richard Bellinger, who put wet blankets on the roof to save his home. When water dried up, he is said to have doused the home with hard cider. There are a lot of stories and legends about the fire. Some of them you have to take with a little grain of salt, but they're still darn good stories. As the fire pushed north the morning of October 10th, 1871, rain began to fall on Chicago. The fire finally started to burn out, 
just as it was approaching these houses. Its residents were lucky. Most of their neighborhood was gone. What you see in the days after the fire by people who left records is not only regret for the destruction, but almost a, a little bit of guilt that somehow their homes had survived when so many of their neighbors had been impacted by this disaster. You'll find plenty of other pre-fire buildings around Chicago because the idea that the Great Fire burned the entire city to the ground is a myth. Chicago likes to tell big stories. And one of the biggest stories is the Great Chicago Fire. Now, the effects were truly, truly devastating. But the ways in which that myth is complicated is that there were still huge portions of the city that weren't impacted by the fire at all. I think it's important in the minds of Chicagoans to think that everything was wiped clean and that Chicago really had to kind of pull itself together and rebuild from this disaster because that makes for a better story.